Dr. Hassan is here again. Uh, the topics for today called torque. So what is torque? Torque meaning that when we apply a force and we create a rotation about a pivot point. So in this case, I'm holding the pencil like this and I apply the force from top and then this create a rotation. So this rotation called torque. Som sometimes the rotation is visible, sometimes it's not visible, but the tension is there. So when you apply, for instance, a force here, you can see it can break from the pivot point. There, that's where the torque is created. Now, let's just talk about some terminologies. We have the torque arm. Torque arm is the distance, perpendicular distance to the force. We have fulcrum. Fulcrum is like a pivot point, a point of rotation, pivot point. Then the point that we want to find the, the, the torque about that point. Now, in order to clarify the definition of torque, I use this example of wrench and knot that everybody is familiar to it. So let's look at this, consider the forces that I just show you here. If you look at this picture, you can see if I want to tie this bolt, I'm applying different forces or a tie or untie, whatever it is that in this case. Now I apply a force of F1. Do you see any rotation created by force F1? No. Why? Because force F1 is crossing through the knot. There is no perpendicular distance, right? Perpendicular distance, what we say, we say that not every distance create the torque. The distance that create the, the torque has to be the perpendicular distance. So I'm going to give you an equation in, in, in a matter of a second. Who create the most torque? Just You can laugh at me right now. Is F2 create the most force because it's further away and it's perpendicular, right? So if you want to create torque, the force has to be further away and perpendicular. How about force F5? Nothing. It's going to just rip off the knot, right? So F3 will be a little bit less because the distance is less. Now, that's the whole reason of leverage. You're going to use a lever just to increase the distance. If you want to get more leverage, you create, add one more to it. So just in, in a very short word, torque, I'm going to just show it with T is equal to force times distance. Very easy. But the problem with this is that how we know what distance and how we can measure that distance. Now in this case, the distance is perpendicular, right? So I can say D is perpendicular distance, F is the force and T is the torque. Very easy. Now the force F4, what should I do about this? Now, if you look at force F4, you can see, like, if you look into F4, somehow, like, assume I'm going to give it a degree to this, 30 degree, you can see for force F4, a little bit of it creates something, but you, which one of them? If you remember the lecture before this, I talk about components. Now, in the components, you can see just the Y component of F4 create the force, right? Create the torque. Now, how can I find the Y component of it? I'm going to just make this equation slightly easier for everybody to understand. So I'm going to say F D sine theta. Now what is theta? Theta is the angle between force and the distance. Distance is actually, we call it torque arm, right? which is, uh, which is uh, the arm for the, the torque. Now, another example I always use to clarify the meaning of torque, I said that if you hold the baby on your chest, it's so easy to hold it, right? But if you hold the baby further away from your body, you can see the tension on your shoulder. That is torque, right? That's the force that apply to a distance and that create um, let's just do a couple of examples. In this example, I have a force here. I have a pivot point here, pivot O, and then I have a force here at 20 Newton. Now, the other thing that I forgot to tell you, torque has a direction. It has a direction of positive and negative. Wherever we put the torque, we have to say that what direction is this. Now, in this case, F2 and F3 so the rotation meaning clockwise or 
Count the clockwise. Remember a clock. If this is 12, you come back from 12 to 3. If you go like this, this is clockwise. If you go the opposite way, that's what we call it. Counter. Counterclockwise. So counterclockwise, you can just simply show it with CCW. Clockwise, you can show it with CW. In this case that I show you, I have a 20 Newton and the distance here is 0 0.75 meter. I want to know how much torque will be created about point. Oh, it will be very easy. We can simply say the torque about point O is equal to 20 times 0 0.75 times sine of 90 degrees. Because if this is your D, the D with the force, they have the angle of 90 degrees. It's completely perpendicular. Sine of 90 degrees is always 1. In this case, will be 20 times 0 0.75. I guess it's 15 Newton meter. That's the unit for torque. In the same example, like assume that 20 is, is with an angle. Before I jump in, so I have, again, I'm going to just change the value of this. This is going to be 15 Newton. The angle here is 45. Up there, the rotation is clockwise, right? So beside that, you put CW. CW means clockwise. Some of you asked me, how do you know it's clockwise? Just look at the rotation, right? Look at the pivot, how it rotates. Now... The rotation of it, obviously, you can just by looking into this, you can see the rotation is like it's going to rotate like this, right? In the direction of, I put the red line. Now, for 15, the angle is 45. So you can say T about point O is equal to uh, the force, which is 15 times 0 0.75. The angle between the force and distance is 45 degrees, which is going to be sine of 45 degrees. I'm going to use my calculator. Okay, the answer I got is 5.95. Sorry, 7.95. 9.5 Newton meter. So again, in this example, the rotation is not clockwise. The rotation is counterclockwise. Look at here. The component that create the rotation is this guy, which is 15 sine 45, right? And this guy create a rotation of counterclockwise. So you should put counterclockwise. Now assume a system that right now I want to go and talk about levers and taking this uh, to, to the levers to calculation, how we calculate levers, and then what is happening in levers. So uh, let's, 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 sh let's talk about a lever, and then a lever is something that we use, I can actually copy the picture from here. Okay, in lever, what we use, we use a fulcrum, the same example that I told you, like a pivot. We have the load. In order to lift the load, you use the effort. Now, how much your advantage is going to be? Advantage is going to be, as human, we are not powerful. We want to move a big load. So the mechanical advantage, we say that uh, is, is equal to the load divided by effort, right? Now, in this example, if you want to lift this load, how much effort you need to apply? Now, it's all depending on the distance, right? Distance from here to here, D1, and distance from here to here is 
d2 now if your effort is f f of f and full do i'm going to call that f of l f of load and f of sorry f of e f of effort now mechanical advantage is equal to f of l over f of e now depending on how much the load is how much the force that you apply that's called mechanical advantage that we are using a machine remember levers are types of machine so or simple machine now how can we calculate like for instance in this example I want to know how much force I need to apply if the rest of them are given right now what we can say we can say if you look into this picture the force of load is look like this right f of l is going down f of e the same thing is going down like this now if you have f of load and f of force again i put them such that they are vertical right now they are not vertical you can say f of load times d1 right remember these two are perpendicular together so how much clockwise moment i have clockwise torque is equal to fl times d1 counterclockwise is equal to fe times d2 now when i'm in equilibrium at the moment of i'm using the lever i can say these two torques are equal together right so the rotation that this creates is equal to rotation that the other one creates so i can say summation of torque equal to zero like it's static if we consider it static we can say clockwise torque plus counterclockwise torque is equal to zero now from this picture you can say they are equal to zero but again remember the rotation of them are different or you can simply say that these two are equal together so you can say fl times d1 is equal to fe times d2 it's an example of leverage and then this is how we calculate them now let's just do a problem with some numbers on it now in this problem i have a load or i can say f1 is equal to 100 newton the distance from here to here is 0 0.1 meter the distance from here to here is 0 0.8 meter i apply a force here I want to know how much force I need to apply here to stay in equilibrium, right? So I want to find F2. Now, how much your clockwise torque is? So any force in this side, they create a clockwise. Any force in the other side, they create a counterclockwise torque. So you can say clockwise torque is equal to f1 times d1 whatever is that so it's 100 times 0 0.1 counterclockwise torque is equal to f2 times 0 0.8 in order to be in equilibrium the summation of torque should be zero the torque that this guy apply is equal to the other torque that the other one applies so the stay stay in equilibrium so we can say the counterclockwise is equal to so f1 d1 is equal to f2 d2 anything on the left has to be equal everything to the right they still they have to be equal now i'm going to get f2 times 0 0.8 is equal to 100 times 0 0.1 from here you're going to get f2 is equal to 100 divided by 8 which is 100 divided by 4 is 25 divided by 8 is 12.5 newton isn't it a magic 
you just you can actually move this 100 newton by applying a force of 12.5 newton now let's just do an example where we have multiple force how we can consider a leverage with multiple force We have a force here, 200 Newton. One force here is 50 Newton. The other force here, I don't know how much is that. So I'm gonna call this one F1, F2, F3, I don't know. But I know the distance. I know the distance from here to here is 0 0.2. From here to here is 0 0.6. Here to here is 0. 0.3. Now you need to look into clockwise and counterclockwise torques. So everything on the right will create a clockwise, everything on the left will create a counterclockwise rotation. So clockwise rotation will be just one fourth, will be F1 times D1, which will be 200 times 0 0.2. You can actually calculate this, which will be 40 newton meter counterclockwise torques is going to be f2 d2 plus f3 d3 so f2 d2 so it will be 50 times 0 0.6 plus f3 that i don't know how much d3 is d3 is not 0 0.3 you have to go to the fulcrum you have to go to the pivot the point of rotation right if you go to the point of rotation, your D3 will be 0 0.9. So D2 is 0 0.6 and D1 is 0 0.2 times D D3, which is 0 0.9. Now I can say clockwise torque is equal to counterclockwise torque. So clockwise torque is 40, counterclockwise is 50 times 0 0.6, which is 30. So it would be 30 plus F3 times 0 0.9. The answer for F3 is equal to 40 minus 30, which is 10. Divided by 0 0.9, the answer is 11.11. .11 newton so now look at look at the magic right in one side you have 50 in the other side you have in one side you have 200 the other side you have a 50 and 12.5 it's the magic right a 12.5 can actually with a 50 newton they can balance 200 newton um, we are done with this lecture you have a lab about this i'm going to go over the details of the lab of how you want to do that thank you and then Looking forward to see you in the next video about police. Thank you.